Howdy folks, I'm Cameron with Black Hills Information Security. What we're talking about today is proxying traffic through Burp from the Android emulator Genymotion. All right, so we're going to go all the way from creating the device through looking at application traffic. So once you have Genymotion installed, you're just going to hit the plus. I am going to create another Google Pixel. And for the Android version, you can go up to 12. I'd select 11, just because everything seems to work on 11. For the most part, these should be good. You can change whatever you want, but the defaults are perfectly acceptable for our purposes. And so then it'll install, and you can just click Start. If the device fails to start, Especially if you're on an older machine, you may have to go into your BIOS settings and enable virtualization. But it looks like we're good here. So that came up pretty quickly. Most of the system apps are boring, so if I want to be able to install apps from, let's say, the Google Play Store, I'm going to go over here to this OpenG Apps option, click on it, Accept, and then this is going to install all the Google stuff. All right, and then we'll have to restart the device. We'll just do that now. And while that's happening, let's set up our proxy in Burp. So we're going to pull up Burp. I'm using the professional version, but all of this will work on Burp Suite Community as well. You want to go to Proxy, click on your proxy settings. And by default, it'll be proxying on localhost 8080. We're going to add a new proxy. And let's see. So we could bind to the Wi-Fi IP, but for now, we're just going to do all interfaces. In practice, this is typically a bad idea if there's other people on your network, because that means anyone could put in that host and port, a host and port of your device and start using your proxy. I don't know why they'd want to, but for now, we're just gonna do that. And then let's say port 8082, that's a good one. And press okay, accept the warning. I'm gonna uncheck the proxy on 8080. We shouldn't be getting anything through that anyway. And then once you have that set up, that should be good. However, while we're on this screen, we're going to export the certificate. We'll have to import this to the device in order to, in order for our device to trust Burp to proxy traffic. Certificate in DIR format. Press next. Select a place to save it. And yep, the folder we're already in is going to work. Dot DIR. Press save. Press next. And then you should see the certificate was successfully exported. Cool. And then you can X out of that. All right. So now the BERT proxy is running. Now, with a lot of emulators, you'd have to scroll up, go into settings, and then set your proxy under the advanced options. That is not how we're going to do it today. We're actually going to use ADB to proxy traffic from our device to our local machine. So I guess the first thing we want to do is connect to the device via ADB. So if we run ADB devices, good, we can see we have one device and that is our Google Pixel emulator. So we can run ADB connect. And then if you just want to check that that's working, ADB shell should drop you into a device shell. Cool. And so all of the commands that we're using will be linked in the video description. I'm gonna create the proxy, local proxy to localhost 3333. That exits without an error, so we should be good. And then ADB reverse. We're going from 3333 to TCP, whatever our BERT port was. If you forgot, you can just go back into your proxy settings, and we see it's 8082. All right. Oh, that appears to have worked, so let's pull up BERT again. 
and go over to our HTTP history. Let's search for something. Let's say hello world. We see we got some traffic. It's a 302. It's not exactly what we wanted and nothing's happen happening on our emulator. This is because we have not yet installed the burp certificate on this device, which is needed for any traffic to be encrypted. So there's two ways to install trusted certificates on Android. There's the user store and then there's the um, system store. As of I think it's Android 11, apps by default will not trust certificates that are installed in the system in the user store. So we're going to go straight ahead and install it to the system. To do this, it's a little bit more of an involved process and the device does need to be, we need to be able to mount the system is writable, which requires root. That's okay because most emulators give you a rooted device by default. Android also expects all certificates to be in a certain format. So we exported the burp certificate in GUR format, but Android wants a .pem, so we're going to use OpenSSL to convert that. All right. And now in addition to it being in the PEM format, it has to be named with the hash of the file. So we can also do that using OpenSSL. And then piping that through head negative one just gives us the hash value. So the file has to be named exactly that with a dot zero. Cool. All right, now that certificate is ready to be put on the device. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to restart ADB as root. Good, it's already running as root. And then ADB remount. This remounts the system partition as writable. Otherwise, we would not be able to write to the slash system slash whatever. You should see remount succeeded. If you get any other message, this probably is not going to work and we'll have to do some debugging. But luckily it worked this time. Next, we are going to push the certificate to the SD card on the device. All right, one file pushed. Now we can do ADB shell. And we are going to move it from the SD card to the folder that the Android device expects it to be in. All right. And then last thing, just like you might do with um, SSH keys, we are going to change the permissions on that. And it should be there. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we'll go back to burp. And we'll try our hello world again. And it's still not happy. See, we got a bad request up here at some point. So, as the first line of defense usually is, we are going to just restart this device. All right, now since we restarted that device, we're going to have to restart our proxy. And go here. Enter. All right. And suddenly we have some more traffic. I don't know what that is. Let's clear it. Yes. And let's do our hello world again. Perfect. We have internet connectivity. Another thing I like to do, click on this enough times until it starts ordering traffic in reverse order, so that way the newest requests show up on top. Yep, so we've got Android Google APIs, plenty of um, these 204s are just connectivity checks. And then we have plenty of traffic going out that we didn't ask for, but you know, that's fine. So earlier we installed OpenG app, so that means we can go to the Play Store. And let's log in. I'm going to do that off screen. But you can still see Burp, which tells you exactly how loud Google Play is. That's cool. And we'll, uh, 350 some requests later, we have made it to the Google Play Store. 
All right. So what's what's a good app? One I haven't checked out yet is Be Real. Let's do that one. Install. I'm going to clear all of the traffic. And open. One notification every day. It sounds real threatening when you put it that way, guys. Okay, so we have a couple of 204s. Why is it doing these things? Firebase. That's probably the Be Real app. This one's probably the Be Real app. You can see. So, just a side note, there's nothing illegal about looking at this traffic. If you just take an app off the Play Store and start editing these requests and then setting, sending malicious payloads or otherwise unexpected data, that is bad. Don't do that. That can get you in trouble. If you get in trouble, I am not responsible for that. Oh, so we see all the things it's sending. Sending our platform data. The device manufacturer. So this phone, so this app, for example, knows we're running on an emulator and some apps might do things to prevent that. Yep, yep, interesting things. So not all apps are just going to work. And that's because of something called certificate pinning. So if I, let's search for Instagram. Just because your device trusts a certificate authority for in this instance, we installed the Burp Cert, which tells it Port Swigger is a certificate authority and should be trusted to relay SSL and TLS traffic. That doesn't mean that the apps will. So, for example, Instagram will not trust Burp to proxy its traffic. There is something in the code that says, I only want direct connections to some certificate related to Instagram to be allowed. And a good way to detect that is if everything else is working properly, and then you go to open the app, and it tells you something is very, very wrong. There are typically ways to bypass this, but that's not what we're talking about today. So that's all I've got for you. So as far as actually analyzing traffic, that's going to be for another day and another time. So quick recap, we installed an Android virtual device using the Jenny Motion emulator. We used OpenG apps to get access to all the Google things. We set up a proxy through ADB so that all of our device traffic is proxied through BERT. We exported the BERT certificate, installed it to the Android system store so that apps would trust it, and then we looked at some traffic. So that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you next time.